morning fireflies welcome back today I thought we would do a video on um, techniques that you can do to get transparent images um, there's a couple of things I'm going to go over with you today so the first one I like to do is um, using the beeswax pellets this one I've used in numerous projects in the past and uh, I just thought I would share again uh, for some of you who may be are new to the channel and have not seen those. Now I do apologize for the shadows guys but I'm working in a different space today because um, I've got to have my ironing board set up. So let's just jump in. The first thing I'm going to do, I've got two images printed out here because I want to show you um, how different these are going to come out. This is just a, a really pretty one that I've doubled up, so I thought this would look nice in the project that we're going to make, and then I wanted uh, to, to use some faces and show you with that as well. So we've got a couple of things we're going to do today. Now, I would recommend you cover your ironing board with a um, towel in case the beeswax should uh, seep out. I did not do that on this and I've already got a little bit of a stain so I learned um, that just be careful. Um, the other thing you're going to want is two sheets of baking paper that way you can sandwich um, your image. Uh, print this out on just regular copy paper and then take your little uh, beeswax pellets and just sprinkle those all over. Now you can get these at a craft shop um, or do a search online. Uh, if you have someone local who keeps bees, you can get beeswax from them as well. Alright, so let me get my iron on. I should have had that going. You're going to want to put this on a low heat um, and then just adjust accordingly. If it's not melting, then just gradually increase it. I'm going to put two sheets over this top just to make absolute certain that I do not get my iron in contact with the beeswax because if you have the ability to have two irons, one for crafting, I would recommend that. Um, I know a lot of ladies have little craft irons. I don't have one. And I did have a separate one, but because we're downsizing, I got rid of it, and I, I've just got the one that I normally use. But it's no problem as long as you absolutely protect it. So just, like I said, start out with the heat on low, and then just gradually adjust. And then I'll probably need to add a bit more beeswax, but you will find that the beeswax will spread really quick. So you don't need a lot. Um, I mean, I've been working with this for a couple of years now, and I'm I'm just finishing off the first bag. To be honest, um, a little of this goes a long ways. I can see some places that did not melt. Let me go back over that. Sorry, I'll try not to move the camera too much. Um, this ironing board's not the best place to have my camera mounted, but okay. Hopefully that will have melted, and then we can see how much more. Yeah, it's getting there. You see, there's still a few places that need going over so I'm just going to add a little bit more and then this will all start to come you'll see it when we get started working on the project but right now we'll just get this covered make sure all of that image is done
more up here. Hmm. Okay, that should be done now. And just be careful when you um, touch it, guys, because it will still be wet. You can see that probably. It's still quite wet, so do be careful about that. And then just peel that off. And as I said, you, this, you'll be able to see a bit better once I um, put this on the project. So sit that someplace and let that dry. And let me go ahead and do this one because I want to do a project with this as well. So if you like this, I would just recommend gathering up several things and doing kind of a bulk um, beeswax session. That way you don't have to keep get, getting your supplies out and just save you some time. When you peel this top layer off, guys, make absolute certain that you have got the um, side with the beeswax facing down. Otherwise, you will ruin your uh, iron for uh, using it on your clothes. You won't be able to go back and use it. And you'll smell it start to smoke if, if that's happened. So do be careful about that. Yeah, this is already, you don't need as much on your section, second sheet because some of the beeswax has, has adhered to the uh, baking sheet, so you won't need as much. Okay. Shut this off. And... Sit this to dry. So I am now going to move back into the studio and we will carry on. Okay guys, we are back. I've cut a few of the images out. Now I want to share with you um, something I have discovered. I highly recommend the cheapest copy paper that you've got. I have depleted my cheap stuff. <laughs> Paul has used it all, and so I've ended up having to print on the 120 GSM, which I can already see is not going to be as transparent. You can see through it, but not like you would if this was on 80 gram paper. Now this one shows up much better the, um, because it's it's just all lighter. You can see the image back here coming through. Um, and of course, on darker, I'm trying to think of this, if it would show. That shows through a bit better as well. Um, let me see if I've got some words that I could put. Yeah, so you can see there, that's going to show through. But again, this is with 120, so um, definitely pick up the most cheap copy paper that you can can get to do this with and it, it is beautiful honestly so let's do something with um, this and I was thinking about a little addition for <clears throat> to put into our journal page that would probably be either attached to the page or sewn in so what we will do, I've got this uh, leftover scrapbook paper. It doesn't matter what size. Um, you would want to measure this based on what um, size journal you're going to be doing. So I want to allow, let me zoom this out so you guys can see. I'm going to allow about an inch hinge. So I'm just going to score that at the one inch mark. That way I've got that. I can put it on the journal page edge um, if I want this to flip over or it could be sewn into the signature if you wanted. 
So just bear that in mind. If, if you're sewing it in, you might want even more on the other, hanging on the other side of the signature. Um, so I'm going to take this down to about three and a half. This piece, I'm going to go ahead and cut that at uh, three and a half as well, or just under, and that is six inches. Dookies, dookies. All right, so I am now just going to cut a little. Um, rectangle out of these, make sure these are lined up. And I want that showing out the back. So I'm just going to run this through the big shot. I won't pull it over there guys. Um, I had measured that. I must have been using this one, but yep. I just want to make sure I got that facing the right way. Will my glue work today? Yep, it's working. That's unusual. I'm just going to put a little bit around this. Very pretty. So now you could do some stitching around this, um, but you can see, isn't isn't that beautiful? It's just it, and actually, once this has been put in, it is much more transparent than um, when I was trying to just hold it up. Let me see if I can grab. So once that's in the journal. Let me just grab. I'm sure I've got a journal here somewhere. Uh, this is the one that just I, I, I haven't completed. So I'm thinking if you extended that, you could sew this in, and that would just be a nice little flap. But I'm probably going to have it just attached to a page so that that will flip over. So let me just finish this one off and then we'll go on to the next uh, way that you can 
get those your papers um, with the transparent. The next one we'll do is printing on tracing paper. Um, if you don't want to bother with the beeswax, you can do that as well. So. idea of just a little place that you could write there something, a little note. So I'm going to put that down. And let me just run over to the machine and do some stitching, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, we are back. I've cut a few of the images out. Now I want to share with you um, something I have discovered. I highly recommend the cheapest copy paper that you've got. I have depleted my cheap stuff. <laughs> Paul has used it all and so I've ended up having to print on the 120 GSM which I can already see it's not going to be as transparent. You can see through it, but not like you would if this was on 80 gram paper. Now this one shows up much better the, um, because it's, it's just all lighter. You can see the image back here coming through. Um, and of course I'm darker. I'm trying to think if this, if it would show. That shows through a bit better as well. Um, let me see if I've got some words that I could put. Yeah, so you can see there that's going to show through. But again, this is with 120, so um, definitely pick up the most cheap copy paper that you can, can get to do this with. And it, it is beautiful, honestly. So let's do something with um, this. And I was thinking about a little addition for <clears throat> to put into our journal page that would probably be either attached to the page or sewn in. So what we will do, I've got this uh, leftover scrapbook paper. It doesn't matter what size. Um, you would want to measure this based on what um, size journal you're going to be doing. So I want to allow, let me zoom this out so you guys can see. I'm going to allow about an inch hinge. So I'm just going to score that at the one inch mark. That way I've got that. I can put it on the journal page edge. Um, if I want this to flip over, or it could be sewn into the signature if you wanted. So just bear that in mind. If, if you're sewing it in, you might want even more on the other, hanging on the other side of the signature. Um, so I'm going to take this down to about three and a half. This piece, I'm going to go ahead and cut that at uh, three and a half as well. I'm just under, and that is six inches. Keys, keys. All right, so I am now just going to cut a little. Um, rectangle out of these. Make sure these are lined up. And I want that showing out the back. So I'm just going to run this through the big shot. I won't pull it over there, guys. Um, So 
such a pretty little image, isn't it? Oh no. I've cut those two. Oh god, I've cut those too small. She would work. Alright, let me just cut this one out. I thought I had measured that. I must have been using this one, but glue work today? Yep, it's working. That's unusual. So I'm just going to put a little bit around this. Very pretty. So now you could do some stitching around this, um, but you can see, isn't isn't that beautiful? It's just it, and actually, once this has been put in, it is much more transparent than um, when I was trying to just hold it up. Let me see if I can grab. So once that's in the journal. Let me just grab. I'm sure I've got a journal here somewhere. Oh, this is the one that just I, I, I haven't completed. So I'm thinking if you extended that, you could sew this in, and that would just be a nice little flap. But I'm probably going to have it just attached to a page so that that will flip over. So let me just finish this one off and then we'll go on to the next uh, way that you can get those uh, your papers um, with the transparent. The next one we'll do is printing on tracing paper. Um, if you don't want to bother with the beeswax, you can do that as well. So, I kind of like the idea of just a little place that you could write or something, a little note. So I'm going to put that down. And let me just run over to the machine and do some stitching, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I have run that through, and you can see you know, I just let it sit to dry before I bother it too much. Let that drink ink completely dry. This is an um, ink jet printer I use as well, so you want to be aware of that. Um, but I think that's come out beautiful and let's just let me just cut this off with the <coughs> trimmer. Okay, 
And look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So there you go. I mean, this is obviously, because it's beeswax, it's got a thicker uh, coat. Plus, like I said, the paper itself is going to be slightly heavier. Um, but the tracing paper does an amazing job, and it's very inexpensive. I actually prefer this to the vellum now. Um, yeah, than vellum. Uh, I just think it's it's a little bit thinner. So there's three ways, really, um, that you can achieve that. And then, like I said, um, what you want to do with that beyond it, it's just limitless. Um, there's so many tutorials out there and different ways that you can use this in uh, tags, journal cards. Um, well, it's just endless. <laughs> so I hope that's helped clear up for you um, how to use the beeswax, uh, how you would be able to feed this through your printer if you choose to use the um, tracing paper. And yeah, I hope you'll give this a try. I hope everybody is uh, doing well out there. And stay tuned. I've got a lot of projects planned and I will be back very soon. Take care everybody. Bye.